Hermitcraft Infinity. Welcome back to Hermitcraft Infinity. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We interrupt this program to bring you a WFRT News Special Report. WFRT News has learned that Tinfoil Chef, vlogger, Minecrafter, hermit, and journeyer to the Far Lands, is making a statement. We take you now live to the Pentagon. Welcome, and thank you for coming. I just wanted to take a moment to express my appreciation for my viewers and subscribers. In a recent episode, I had some things to say that some took a little bit not in the exactly positive light that I, that should have, that I really would have preferred. But on the other hand, there were many others who left encouraging and supportive comments and I just wanted to express my very deep appreciation for that. It means a whole lot and it proves once again that while I may not have the most subscribers on YouTube, I certainly have the best. Thank you all very much. This has been a WFRT News Special Report. We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming already in progress. Recently, I put up these golems back here, and they've been doing okay, except for the wooden golem that was picking up the drops. Yeah, these things, they cause damage when you walk through them when they're more than three quarters grown. And so my wooden golem bit the, bill, bit the big one. This guy is okay because he's in the middle between the rows and he doesn't have to go through them. He just has to walk up and down the rows and break off the fully grown ones. So I replaced the wooden golem with a vacuum hopper. I may come up with another golem that has the ability to withstand going through that sometime because I really did want this job done by a golem. It's no special reason, just I wanted it that way. So I'll probably do that sometime soon. Meanwhile... My storage is, well, on this side, these banks, as you can see, are getting full. And we're getting a lot of fill up over here. Now, these five banks that uh, are all green, those are all empty. So there's still plenty of storage for what's coming in from the quarry, which is all of this stuff, all this nether stuff. I've got a million nether quartz. I've got 13 million netherrack and just crazy, insane amounts of stuff. I'm probably going to take the netherrack and uh, the AE matter condenser that makes the singularities and the matter balls and such. I'm probably going to start pumping this netherrack into, the, into that thing just to get rid of it. I mean, who in the world needs 13 million netherrack? Good night. Anyway, I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be building another two two uh, stations of four uh, no two stay two of these assemblies of eight drive bays and I'm probably going to just do it back here I'll run uh, two smart cables off of this green which is the one that is used for the drive bays there's two down there for those I'll run two more over in here and uh, get them set up and then populate them and then when it's all said and done I will have a grand total of 320 64k storage modules so there will be room for all of the things meanwhile uh, I did get this moved over here I'm not sure if this is the really great layout but uh, I'm no good at laying this stuff out. I just know that it needs to have six pillars. They need to be two blocks or higher. They need to be within four blocks of this thing, and so on. Right now, it's in a position and set up. The, the thing works, even if it doesn't look as good as it should. Uh, I'm going to play with it some more and see what I can come up with in terms of layout. And I have come to a conclusion about node moving. 
not only am I going to, once I get figured out exactly where and how I want to set this up, I'm going to go ahead and declare this node finished and get it moved into a final position someplace and go ahead and energize it and start using it. Meanwhile, over here, as I mentioned last time, I am going to be preparing to build another super node. But I have also decided I'm not going to move any nodes until such time as I can do so without damaging them. Because based on my own experience and what I've read online, there is a problem. Well, it's not necessarily a problem because the potential is pretty much designed into the mod. That the node in a jar has a fairly high chance, from what I can tell, about 75% or more, of damaging any node that you use it to transport. However, the Blood Magic Teleposer does not have that problem. And so today, I am going to get into a power start on Blood Magic to get started and get quickly as possible to the point where I can make and use the Teleposers. Before I get into that, I do want to say one thing about the last episode, and that's what I had to say about the uh, graphic settings, the visual settings, and so on, uh, the quality settings. I did not want anyone to think that I am somehow mad at subscribers and viewers and stuff like that, because I am not. I was simply very frustrated about an issue that I have been dealing with for a very long time. It's very frustrating, and after a while, you reach a point with a frustrating situation where you have to say something about it. And it is entirely possible, perhaps even probable, that my choice of words or tone of voice were not exactly 100% ideal. And if I gave anybody a bad impression, I'm sorry. I just wanted to get something dealt with, and I have... Well, the whole variety of quality issues have been a huge bugaboo for me for a very long time. Like, all the way from back in the beginning. When I first started doing Minecraft videos, I was playing on a laptop. A laptop in which, with Optifine, or actually with the, the utility, the mod that eventually became Optifine, with that, I was thrilled to get 15 frames per second, because without it, I got 5 frames per second. And uh, so on. <laughs> yeah, Think, I've come a long way since then, but there's it, it's been an uphill battle all the way with various quality issues, and you can only deal with something like that just so long before you have to express something about it. In any event, all of that aside, let's get on with things. I am going to head down here and see the reactor's a good place to start. The reactor, by the way, is running great. It's ticking over, uh, maintaining 96% of its capability, its uh, power storage. It's always at 96%. It's barely ticking over, providing all the power I could possibly ask for. Now, I've already gone ahead and cleared out place to put my marker, my landmarks. And I am going to hollow out a 25 by 25 by all the way to bedrock area. All right. I'm going to hollow this whole place out. I've got a filler set up to do that, so it'll just clear this whole place out all the way down to bedrock. And that will give me a large area to work with to set up everything. All of the blood magic stuff is going to be right in here. Let's see. Okay, I need my filler.
Um, no. I should have done this first. Now we put up the filler. All right, I'm going to go grab my landmarks. Yeah, I know it's not really necessary because they are really cheap, but that's the way I've always done it with this sort of thing. You use the landmarks, they pop off, you go back down and grab them. Because, hey, why not? Okay. No, I didn't get that one. I saw it. All right, got it now. Okay, yes, I know I'm obsessing over something that is worth four sticks, four redstone, and four lapis, which is ridiculous. All right, now, Tesseract for power. And I should be able... I don't remember if I can just pop the Tesseract right in here and power this thing directly. All right, pattern is... Clear. Turn that on. Redstone ignored. Is it doing anything? Ugh, glitching. Yep, it's working. Tesseract can, in fact, actually power this thing directly without need of pipes. Good. All right. This is phase one of the Blood Magic Power Start. I'll be back when this area is clear. All right. Here we are. Area is all cleared out. Now, granted, it got kind of messy down here by the bottom when the thing ran into some lava. And... I tried to help it out by pouring water over things, and it just made a bigger mess, and so on. But I'm not really worried about it, because, frankly, I only need, at the moment, anyway, say from Y30 up to the ceiling. And that's going to be enough. I've gone ahead, and uh, I used a waypoint to position that waypoint beacon there so that I can know where I'm working. This is directly right in the center of the room, 25 by 25. The reason for that size is mostly to make, well, to make certain that I had enough room for a tier 6 blood altar should I get to that point, and I'm going to try to actually get to putting up a tier 6. Is it necessary? Probably not, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, other than that, 25 by 25 is a good odd number, and as you know, of course, you know, when doing dimensions in Minecraft and you want things to be centered, you use odd numbers. Okay, so, come down two blocks, and that gives me a two-block space to walk around and get access to things and stuff and so on. And then below that, I'm going to come out for in all directions. And this is going to be where the mob spawner is going to live, and so on. Yeah, okay. But anyway, that's where the mob spawner is going to be. Just throw some light up here. And down below that, let's see, we're going to need one, two blocks for the, where the mob spawner itself, the actual device, is going to be. And then we want another one, two blocks below that, and then we'll have a floor. And in there, I'll uh, initially at least, I'll be using conveyor belts to run everything in towards the center. Now below here, think about like that and then one more and then and this guy 
goes here. All right. So now, wait, one, two, three. Yeah, perfect. All right, that's great. Excellent. Now, what I'll need to do is to uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, this guy right here, the sacrificial orb. This is this is the uh, not cutting yourself friendly version of this thing where you supply this sucker with the first initial bits of LP by draining it from yourself and so on and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this going and just as soon as I can get some blood rooms together eight of them and around this to jump this thing up to tier two because they will go basically just eight of them right around the side like so and uh, that'll bring it up to a tier two and I'll get some uh, oh what are they uh, these guys uh, the, the rune of sacrifice four of these on here I'll have to get uh, one of these blood, bigger blood orbs made and uh, because it's a crafting ingredient in this recipe of course I get four of these made and positioned around this thing to increase how much LP I get from each mob and uh, let's see I'll have to make this guy which means I'll need the tier 2 with 3000 LP in it to put drop an iron sword in there to uh, get that which will pretty much insta kill the mobs it'll one hit them and then I'll need to get more runes and whatnot put together to expand it down into a tier 3 and then a tier 4 and so on so I will check in along the way as I get this stuff done I'm going on my experience with this mod in mod sauce and I'm basically I'm gonna try to just power through this and get as much done as I can as quickly as I can because the main reason I'm doing this in the first place right now is to be able to build and then use teleposers now there is a lot of other cool stuff in this mod and I will get to it but first and foremost we want the teleposers all right we'll be back all right here's the first update for you uh, got this thing all set up and running test rack providing power I have a bit of uh, conduit facade here to make sure that this is blocked the light doesn't leak in and whatnot that seems to be doing the trick at least when you look at it with F7 on there are almost nothing but spawnable spaces in there the one place that isn't is the hole in the middle conveyor belts pushing everything that way All right, down here got the place where they're going to drop down I have a power switch with some uh, redstone conduit going up there to turn the spawner on and off and got this sucker hooked up with an item conduit feeding into this chest and what I'm doing here is uh, let's see from the west I am extracting I'm using a filter so that I can have this thing automatically anytime what's in there turns into one of these it gets extracted so that way all I have to do is just monitor what's in there and when it gets low take this thing and start killing zombies because uh, I used uh, one of those uh, soul vials and made a powered spawner for zombies figured that was easiest and handiest to deal with I could have made one with endermen but I didn't want them teleporting all over the place and besides they hit a lot harder so I've also got uh, the tier 2 with uh, four blood runes and four uh, rune of sacrifice and what they do is increase how much LP you get from each mob and there'll be several of them on the next tier which will go outside of this row of stone 
as soon as I have enough of the slates to make the necessary runes. So, it's time to turn the zombie spawner back on, recharge this thing, and start going more at it. Alright, got another update here. I have expanded this up to tier 3. And I've got placeholders in here for the things I'm going to need for tier 4. And a uh, big part of it is going to be, well, the, the runes for around here. And the, uh, what is that, large bloodstone brick that is needed for the top of these four pillars. And in order to make these... I need these weak blood shards, and I remember back on Mod Sauce, it took me a long time to figure out where you get these. But now I know, and I remember, what I'll have to do is make this, bound, this diamond sword into a bound sword. And in order to do that, I need to create the ritual binding, and for that I need the master ritual stone and 24 ritual stones, which is going to require making up about two, two stacks of these and then upgrading them to this, the uh, reinforced slate. And the way I'll do that is uh, I'll go in here to the filter and I'll take this out and put that in. And then just sit here rocking away on the zombies and doing it to it. I have also been upgrading to the next up blood orbs now. I'm up to this one. And continuing with that. And really? But the only thing that's going on here is just standing here killing zombies until this thing is full, which currently its capacity is 34,000 LP, which is good because I can get this thing filled up, turn the zombies off, kill the last of them off as the... Uh, Thing uses up enough to have room for them and just sit here and click stuff into it and wait and I probably shouldn't have put that in there just yet yeah that was gonna be a bad idea. I need to kill a few more of these zombies and refill that thing first so just keeping you uh, up to date on what's going on. I've also placed a travel anchor here so that I can uh, pop in and out nice and easily and appear right here where I need to be. And so, I'm off to killing more zombies and getting stuff necessary to make the bound sword. I'll be back and ready to do that. All right, it's taken me a while, but I am finally ready to get on with the next step here. And that is to do this thing to make this diamond sword into a, bind, a bound sword. I've got this uh, lava crystal here, and a uh, simple enough crafting recipe for that. And I've got my rituals, master ritual stone, my ritual stones. And I just need to do something with this lava crystal. Pop it in there and let it soak up 10,000 LP and turned into a weak, a weak activation crystal. Meanwhile, I've got this guy here. Uh, the uh, oh, I don't remember what the name of this thing is. A ritual diviner or something like that. But you just shift right click and it cycles around. And you can shift left click to go backwards and the original binding is the one we need this thing will apparently put that all together automatically so let's get this put together and I'm just gonna set it up right here on top of the reactor because hey why not uh, I don't have room in the other place for it just yet so we'll just set it up here there we go all right now okay I do believe I need to put this piece down first and then with the diviner set yeah it's placing all the necessary blocks
Alright, is that right? I don't know what this bit is with it tuned to face north. Okay, it started that way, so we'll leave it that way. But it's got everything set. Okay. Click on it with the activation crystal. Okay, what am I doing wrong here? This thing looks to be set up right. Okay, that's weird. This is not how it worked when I did this before on Mot Sauce. I know I've got plenty of LP in my network. Time to refer to the wiki and see what it is I'm doing wrong. All right, I can't find anything that tells what's going on with this, so I'm going to try something else. Maybe it needed to be closer to this. Maybe I had set this up too far away. So. Okay. It changed. Which means it's putting wrong things in here. So, shift clicking while placing these things is not the thing to do. Okay, now it says tuned to face south. Does that mean I need to face south? It doesn't sound like it makes sense. Nothing appears to have happened. Yeah, I noticed. All right, I give up for the moment. I have no clue what it is that is not happening that needs to. All right, one last try here, and I think maybe I may have finally figured out what was wrong. This weak activation crystal, you know it right now, it says current owner tinfoil chef. Okay, great. Well, it didn't say that a minute ago, because when I made the thing, I forgot to shift right click this thing into the air to bind it to myself. So now, let's try to see if this works. Right clicking on the master stone, rush of energy flows through, toss in the diamond sword, okay let's remove the magnet ring and go over here and toss the diamond sword again, and hopefully that loot bag won't interfere. Well, the thing is working, at least, although it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Let me get rid of some of this crap in my inventory here. All right. Drop this straight down on there. 
Well, how about that? It worked. Great. Or at least something happened. And there is a bound blade. All right, now let's do the right thing here and shift right click. It has an owner listed, so it's activated. All right, great. That means I can now, in the next episode, proceed to the next step. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'm out of here.